Hi, it's Darren. Uh, I want to wish you a kosher and joyous Passover and also a happy Easter. I'm going to take Charlie for a walk in a little while, but before I did, I wanted to do a little update video to share with you some of the things that we've been doing in our portfolios and in your accounts. I have to first of all thank the entire team, Nick and Vicky and Pedro, Andrew and Neil, for really taking charge of phoning all of you, making sure you're safe, making sure you're okay, and just checking in with you. And that's given me time to probably spend more time doing research, listening to webinars, analyst reports, and uh, talking to investment strategists than I've probably ever done before, to try and help understand what we ought to be doing in what is truly a historic uh, and remarkable point in time. Uh, I'm going to show you just how historic it's been, actually. I'm going to show you a couple of charts today from our friends at Capital Group. And as you know, we're big fans of the work that they do. So the first chart I'm going to put up for you uh, with the magic of computers is to show you just how dramatic the decline we saw a few weeks ago in the stock markets actually was. So this chart has a lot of information on it, but the, the, it's really summarizing and showing you what all the declines uh, that the markets have had in the modern era. And you can, if you look in really close to the y-axis, you'll see the current one. Uh, so you can see just how dramatically fast and sharply things came down. Now, there's a silver lining in that, in the sense that uh, markets, when they drop that way, are completely indiscriminate in what they sold off. So both good and bad securities all got sold off at the same time and pretty much to the same degree. So that allows us to go shopping for things that or have been on sale that are much cheaper than maybe they ought to be. So I'm going to come to our shopping list in the stock market in a minute. But before that, I want to share with you one of the first things that we did that kind of come from our experience. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is my fifth or sixth time through a bear market. I don't want to count. But one of the first things I realized when we saw the market begin to sell off because of a disruption, right? We saw uh, most of the economies being shut down, so all of us stay safe from the virus. So when that began to happen, we saw such a rapid decline in the stock markets, I figured that one of the things that was going to get hit very quickly was the corporate bond market. So we very rapidly sold off our corporate bond positions. Also, too, because interest rates, we had thought interest rates were going to be flat to potentially rising, that completely changed on a dime. So I moved out of our corporate bond positions and it was very fortunate I did that because we got ahead of uh, a lot of wreckage in the corporate bond market. And the corporate bond market effectively went no bid, which is something it did in 2008 and 2009. But it basically means nobody could do anything. Nobody was selling, nobody was buying, nothing was happening. Now, situation's changing very rapidly. So we're starting to go back into some corporate bond positions, including a few very special ones that are highly active because we're seeing things now that we've never seen before. For example, the Federal Reserve in the United States, which is adding trillions of dollars of liquidity into their economy and into their market, is now for the first time going to start buying corporate bonds to add liquidity. They've never done this before. So we can now go in and buy bonds that were thrown away a few weeks ago, and we can pick those up cheap because the Federal Reserve is going to be our buyer. So we found a wonderful manager that's going to be able to do this for us with great skill and great experience. So these are important things to keep uh, on top of because things are changing very, very quickly. Now, a lot of you have asked, what have we been doing in the portfolios? Well, one of the first things that we did was we got rid of a few positions that I thought are going to struggle going forward from here. So for example, we got rid of our life insurance positions because uh, life insurance companies have a fundamentally different uh, uh, operating environment and profit environment in a low interest rate period than they do in a rising interest rate period. And they also uh, perform very differently than banks do uh, in situations like this. So we exited those. Um, I think it's also important to point out that, because uh, we had a lot of clients, and I have to thank you guys, by the way, you guys have been complete veterans in all this stuff. The most common question we're getting is, what are you buying, when are you buying, and when I should give you more money? So that's exactly the correct behavior. I did notice, though, last week we had a really good bounce in the market, which was great. That let us move away from a few things that I think will struggle going forward, as I said. Uh, but I also am worried it might be turning some investors into Toronto Maple Leaf fans. You know, winning two games doesn't make it a streak. Uh, it's very positive to see the market firming up here, and that's becoming uh, a positive sign because it's also positive because the virus looks like it might be getting in check in some of the uh, worst places in the world, like in, in Italy, Spain, and New York City. But we're not sure yet if that's a permanent change or maybe we're just in the eye of the hurricane. We're going to have to see. So it's positive, but I'm not quite sure there's an all-clear signal just yet. So what are we doing? Uh, well, the first thing is we're going to pay attention to the lessons of history. So the next chart I'm going to put up for you uh, is also from Capital Group again. And this shows you what the average bear market and average bull market looks like. 
And the first thing I want you to notice is that bear markets in general last less than two years. Uh, and they drop about an average of 33%. So we've actually had a very rapid one, as the first chart showed, but we're getting close to what the average decline was. We actually were close to 30, a little bit more, and then we bounced back from that. Uh, and I think we're gonna get some more volatility coming. But the more important lesson from that chart is once those are done, I want you to see that the bull market lasts over five times longer than the bear market does, and it surges dramatically more. Now, I think we're gonna shape up nicely for one of those things when we're through the, the pandemic, uh, not just because we're gonna have a return, uh, a restart of the economy, which was shut down kind of temporarily, but we're also seeing trillions of dollars of stimulus being flooded into the global economy from governments around the world. And that's gonna go somewhere. So this, if we can just get through the next, and I don't know if it's the next few weeks or months, but once we get through it, the potential for a bull market of epic proportions is certainly being built right now. So again, the lesson we learn from history is that no one learns from history, right? So we're gonna try and pay attention to that. So, uh, so look at the graph and, and uh, I think you'll see what my point is there. Okay, a couple of other things that I've been doing. So uh, in short, we're creating two shopping lists for everybody. The first shopping list I'll call the bargain basement bin. You know, what is in the bargain bin? Companies that were thrown away, that are too cheap, that we really want to be happy we're picking up right now. Many of which pay lots of dividends, so they let us be patient because we're earning our income while we wait for things to recover. So imagine uh, going through your favorite shopping mall, which you'll have to imagine right now because you can't go there at the moment. But imagine if every single thing in that mall went on sale by 30% at the same time you would have a pretty good idea of what you knew was a value and what you knew was a bargain versus stuff you wouldn't want to touch, right? So I'm doing the same thing with portfolios now. I'm looking for securities and creating that shopping list of what is so cheap that we're going to be really happy we bought it now when we did. The second uh, shopping list I'm building is to figure out what the new normal is going to look like when we're through all of this. Because first of all, our behavior is all going to be a bit different. If I take you back to before 9-11, you'll remember we never took our shoes off to get in an airplane. Now we all take our shoes off to get in an airplane. So our behavior is going to change as a result of this experience that we're all having. And some of it will be how we buy things as an example. You know, if you didn't have an Amazon account a month and a half ago, I can almost guarantee you have one now. Otherwise, how are you getting anything, right? Um, so that's important to be aware of that. But there's going to be behavioral changes that will impact how we buy and what companies do well and what companies don't do well. So we want to pay attention to being invested there. You know, as I said in my video with Eden Rahim, if you watch that, you know, a real trick to investing is just follow the money. So in that case, we talked about biotech and other areas, but there's going to be a wider application to that. So uh, where do we think new behavior will come? How will things change? The other component to that second shopping list is what all that stimulus money is going to do. Where's it going to go? How's it going to arrive into the economy? And what areas will do remarkably well with all that cash and which ones probably won't? So we're gonna try to figure that out. So those are my two shopping lists. So what's in the bargain bin and what's, uh, what's gonna be part of the new world as we all move through this. So that's what I'm beginning to shop for. So, and again, I'm trying not to be a Maple Leafs fan and just think, hey, it's all over. There's no flashing green light, unfortunately, for any of this stuff. Uh, but we are picking away and we are paying attention. Uh, and I think the one uh, couple of adjectives that sum up what we're doing is we wanna be patient and also opportunist. So we will get through this. We always have, we always will. Uh, stay safe, stay home. Uh, at the, I'm by myself in this park, so that's pretty good. Uh, and I want to wish all of you a very, very good Easter and hope you had a nice Passover. And uh, I'm going to take Charlie for a walk in a few minutes and I got a few other ideas to share there. And I think I'm going to try and keep these video series separate. I think the walks with Charlie uh, are good for wide consumption and really just ideas and things to help us all get through this. Uh, and I think these videos around what we're doing in portfolios, I'd like to just kind of keep those between us. Don't necessarily, well maybe share these with some of the hitchhikers I talked about, people you want to help through this. But I think most of the, uh, the update videos I think I want to just keep for our, our clients and, uh, and the people we look after the most. The Walking with Charlie videos are for pretty much everybody. I think we'll all benefit from that. Anyway, with that I'll leave it there. Thank you very much and we'll talk to you again soon. Be well.